Hi, welcome back to Ono Awakening. This is Ona Christie, and I have a really special guest with me today. And we are going to talk about a topic that I think a lot of people don't think is particularly spiritual, but really it can be. And that topic is money. It, it does affect all, all of us. And coming into this time of ascension where the world is shifting, it really is important to think about money and to really start to change our attitudes about it for a lot of us, right? Because money is just energy. And as we all know, energy can flow in negative directions or it can flow in super positive directions. So um, Brenda Bailey, it has a, a a lot of kind of like money mojo. And uh, let me just introduce her for you. Brenda is known as the shatterer of income ceilings. And so she does work with entrepreneurs, but today she's gonna to be talking about topics that are really applicable to everyone. So stick with us. <laughs> um, she is a theta healing master and instructor who's owned and operated a seven figure business and has been an entrepreneur for 28 years. Um, and she's also a super nice person. She's blended her practical experience as a successful entrepreneur along with the theta healing practices that allow people to have quick income transformations to create the Shatter Your Income Ceiling program and uh, her Shatter Your Income Ceiling Instructor Certification. Brenna's work in the world is to help you break down the barriers to help you heal and get into your true zone of genius uh, to serve the people who need your gifts and make lots of money doing it. And like I said, she does work with entrepreneurs, but we're gonna talk about topics and she can bring her magic in for everybody. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, I, I'm not, I, I always say I work with anybody but I seem to attract a lot of entrepreneurs okay. because that's who I am, right? And I think one of my favorite sayings, Ona, to just start this off with is that money's not the most important thing, but it touches everything that is. Yeah, yeah. at least right now in this society that well, we- it goes with everybody. I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, money's gonna touch what's important to you, right? You gotta be able to put food on the table, have a roof over your head. Yeah. Um, like I live in Texas, so we kind of need to have a car because it's we got lots of space. Right. So we kind of need a car. We're kind of given. I mean, if like if you're in New York City, car's not on the top of your list. But here in Texas, no matter what the size of the city, we cars are pretty important to us here. Right. Yeah. So tell us before we launch into the whole topic of money and 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 aligning with money, right? And aligning money with yourself and your own divine alignment. Before we get launched into that topic, can you tell us a little bit about your journey here and, and what brought you to this place? Because you're really mixing this, this beautiful like balance between the, the, the healing work that you do and this, this whole very kind of left brain you know, money and entrepreneurship and that, that whole bit. What, what, what brought you here? So I've been looking and working on myself, well, we'll say probably for over 30 years, but really started doing it in a more holistic sense mm -hmm. for 29 years. Okay. I started looking at different modalities. And the deal is, is that I have 13 different certifications in integrative healing. Mm -hmm. And it just comes by looking at myself. Yeah. Uh, traditional therapy and psychotherapy weren't changing things for me. So I knew I needed to go a different route. So I just started looking and working on myself. And one of the things I learned very early in my career was that if I actually did really deep healing, which at that time, I only knew the things that were really painful and hurt and took a long time, yeah. that it made a difference in the amount of money I made. Now, it wasn't the reason that I was doing it, but I saw the correlation between it and yeah. thought there's something to this. Yes. And, and that's something I've noticed too, is like, especially for me, it's like the last couple of years, as I've really had to deeply, deeply heal, I, I, I've had to really step back and, and kind of not do as much. And the money has keep rolling in. It's bizarre. <laughs> and do you find that that's normal? Is that, is that typical for? Yes. And, okay. and that's why I, I chose like the technique that I do, which is theta healing, because it was quicker, it was easier, it was less painful. Mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of people think that, um, you know, they have to, that it has to be this big cathartic, you know, heavens parting and angels singing kind of thing in order for this difference 
to yeah. happen in their lives. And a lot of times what happens for people, well now, and now I work with really aware people, even though I know we don't want to, you know, I don't want to make entrepreneurs sound bad or anything, but it's like, I'm just working with really aware entrepreneurs. I'm working with really aware people. Mm -hmm. And I have people that aren't entrepreneurs that still want to go through and go through my processes because it makes such a difference and it was easy and they can just feel it. And the deal is, is that when we release, yeah. whether it be, you know, trauma or emotions or whatever that is, our vibration raises. Yeah. And when your vibration raises, you attract. I mean, if you truly want to be in the law of attraction, you have to raise your vibration. Right. And most people, the only way that they know how to do it is be real heady with it and really have to think about it all the time and be aware of it all the time. And we got lives, right? So it's really <laughs> hard to be able to do that. And right. so Theta Healing actually makes it a whole lot easier for people, way so easier. How is Theta Healing different from the other modalities that you've used or worked with or had, you know? Used? A lot of them work, you know, um, with the conscious or subconscious mind mm -hmm. and or energetically they vibrate like reiki mm -hmm. um you use the you people go into an alpha brain wave right. right right so theta healing is called theta healing because we go into a theta brain wave okay we're in a beta brain wave right now just so you know so what happens is, is that it's beta alpha theta and then gamma and I go like this but what that really means is is that your brain wave actually slows down okay. with all of those right okay so and honestly like monks go to monasteries for years mm -hmm. to meditate in order to be able to go into a theta brain wave because that's really considered where that energy of all that is Right. Yeah. And, and how that is. And so that's, this is the thing though. I'm going to let y'all know this right now. You go into a theta brainwave all the time. You don't have to be trained to do that. You just, what, what we teach in theta healing and what theta healing is, is again about intention and awareness. Like, okay, so this is how I intentionally go into a theta brainwave. Mm -hmm. And this is what all I can do. And it truly allows you to be able to work whoever you believe to be your divine power, you're co-creating. Again, um, not a super religious person, more of a spiritual person, but even in the Bible, and again, I'm, I was raised Catholic, so I don't know a whole lot about the Bible, I'm going to be honest with you, but it's about, you know, finding God within yourself, right? Right. And so theta healing really allows you, because again, we get all of the crap. Mm -hmm. out of the way so yeah. that you you can stop looking for it outside yourself and you can really drop in to it within yourself and when you can be in that space which again people take years traditionally to be able to do this you can do it very quickly with theta healing and that's what really allows you to raise your vibration okay. and really be able to create what it is that you want to create but as human beings you know, you can have a feeling. And that's what I say about other, with Theta Healing, we do muscle testing. We use kinesiology right. to discover what the before is and the after is. Because then that allows our brain to understand that a change has happened. Okay. With most traditional energy healings, you just feel something. Right. But what does that correlate to? And so a lot of times people have, you know, a hard time saying, that this made a difference for me. Mm -hmm. But with Theta Healing, we look for specific beliefs that you hold at a cellular level. We look at specific trauma, specific non-forgiveness. We can do a lot of other exercises through Theta Healing that muscle testing shows you that a change has happened. I call it a science experiment. You have a, you have a constant, which is your muscle testing, the yes and the no, and you have a before and an after. And that really helps but for a lot of people as human beings we've got to be able to quantitatively measure a difference for us so whether that's time weight money you know whatever that is for you sure that's really how our brain kind of wraps around like a change has happened right right and um tell me i, I love this idea of being a co-creator 
right? And, and creating, because I think that's something that I think in spiritual circles, sometimes there's, there's, you go through a certain phase in, in your awakening where you're like, I'm just going to let the divine flow, flow through me, or I'm just going to follow, do what I'm told, do what God tells me to do, or whatever it is. And what you said was really, really key. It was like, you know, the God within you, right? I'd, I'd love to hear you talk more, a little bit more about that. When we are in co-creation with God and when we're not looking for something, because again, I'm not, but most religions teach us to pray to something outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? So there's a big separation. Yeah. And again, divinely, we have God within us. So if there's a separation in this way, guess what? There's a separation in this way. Right. So when we can be in touch, with the divine within us, with within God, then we can we can trust more, mm -hmm. which is a big thing. Faith, and again, we're not talking about blind. You know, it's beautiful what Ona said. Like I'm going to go with the flow because what that means is pretty much I'm going to put that in layman terms. I'm going to get out of my head and stop overthinking it. Yeah. It's really well, what we're I'm saying. I'm not putting that down at all. I mean, that's that's super important. But I think there is a certain point where. <sighs> where you can realize it's like, oh, um, I, I'm not just a passive, you know, tool here. I, I, I have some, you know, uh, it's almost like we're playing, right? <laughs> and it's like, I can make some choices. There's, you know, there's the free, free will choice aspect of it that I think um, you, you get to a certain point and that's where it starts to be like, woohoo, that's where the miracle zone comes in, right? Um, you know, it's just like when you think of somebody and then they call you, right? Yeah. But yeah. you can do it in a bigger way. Yeah. You can think, you know, what it is that you want. And that's what we always say, like, once you learn the technique of theta healing, mm -hmm. you have to be very aware of your thoughts and your words. Right you're going to draw it into you that's right yeah. and people just have a habit they don't realize it that they're negative mm -hmm. i think that that was one of the biggest things that the secret did for us mm -hmm. um i'm most people are familiar with the secret by Rhonda Byrne that came out like i don't know about a decade ago is that you know people really talked about the law of attraction but it was that people are pretty negative and I think it made people aware of how negative they are. <laughs> yeah. And and that, you know what, guess what? That's blocking you, you calling in what it is that you want, right. but also what we hold at a cellular level. And that's where theta healing is different than other ones. We go beyond the conscious and the subconscious and we make changes at a cellular level. Okay. So it affects your DNA. So you work with the body too, which right. is really important, right? Right. But it also helps with the spiritual and the emotional. And those are my favorite places. Yeah. That's why I'm able to talk to people about money and for it to correlate in money, uh -huh. because it really has to do with the spiritual and the emotional. Right. And so it, it cuts down that learning curve and the amount of work that you need to do in order to have what it is that you truly want in your life. But the biggest mistake that people have on is that they're not sure what they want. Yeah. They're yeah. not clear. They're not intentional. Yeah. And so again, that makes it hard right. for those opportunities to land in your, in your lap. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. So um, is that something you help people with then and get clear on what is it they really want? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, initially I do like an intro session. I always say that I prayed, meditated, whatever you want to call it. And the whole fact, cause people would like show up mm -hmm. when I first started 14 years ago doing theta healing, people would just show up and they would have one thing they wanted to work on one mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And I'd be like, um, you know, how we do anything is how we do everything. And it's going to be more than that one thing that we need to change. But, you know, people and I, so I really thought about it and really prayed about it and asked God about it. That's who my divine power is. It does, please don't let that turn you off. Whoever you, whatever you believe to be your divine power, I'm fine with it. I even work with atheists. It's all good, right? Mm -hmm. So I came up with a format of a session that's 90 minutes 
that people can show up. And I knew that if we covered everything, you know, I could give them a list. If we covered everything on the list, they were good. I would never have to see them again. And that's really what I did for most of my career is just that intro session is people doing that intro session. Now, again, because I was divinely directed, right? I was in touch with my, you know, God within myself. And that's where this came from. And that's where this was created from. What I didn't realize was that people would be like so blown away by it that they would do one of three things. They would either refer somebody, mm -hmm. they would um, want to take a class because they'd want to learn the technique. Because I believe that everybody in the world should know theta healing, right? I, I mean, it helps with your family, with your business, with your job, with your life, with your relationship. You know, it, it's just amazing. It's just the best thing to be able to do. And then, um, you know, I just really felt like that and, and, or they wanted to find out how, how else they could continue to work with me. Mm -hmm. And for years, I didn't have anything else for them to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be like, this is it. You know, I mean, this is it, but I would have even like, say I had a psychiatrist that just kept me on retainer. Mm -hmm. Like she worked with me every week because I was part of her self care. Yeah. 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 You know, because she was just like, I just, she worked in the prison system and she was like, I just need to be able to have an option. Mm -hmm. She went to chiropractor, acupuncturist, and me every week just yeah. to support herself. And, and, and that's, that's something I think that uh, uh, so many, almost every super successful person that I know has a healer that they work with and one that they feel comfortable with and that, you know, that they can, and, and sometimes, and whether it's once a week or once a month or quarter, right. whatever it is, but. But yeah, she just had a really intense job, right? So she was like, I do, I need this. Yeah. And, and what was really, and this was at the very beginning of my career. I was like, okay, if you want to put me on retainer, like I didn't, that didn't even occur to me to offer something like that. And yeah. she was, she just said, you know, um, she would constantly say, cause she was a psychiatrist. She would say, do you know how long this would have taken in traditional psychotherapy? Do you mm -hmm. know how long? And then she would always say like, where did you come up with that? And I'd be like, well, Cause she would just come and want to have work done. She really didn't have a huge agenda or, you know, which is why I cre also created that session because I just wanted to be able mm -hmm. to it be more intentional for people. So they could have more than what they thought could have healed and happen for them right. Right. in a very short period of time. Yeah. So, so the healing and, and the money are so connected. And it, it, as you're saying, emotionally and spiritually right as well as financially um what do you feel like are uh, like the most common blocks that you see especially in very spiritually where people around money that are holding them back so theta healing works on four different levels um which is what makes it so great and why it's permanent and what it does and it's like we inherit beliefs traumas um, you know, uh, non-forgiveness, we bring them in from past lives. I don't get to talk to that like on mainstream, but I can talk about it here, right? So we bring in from past lives and it, and it uh, affects like the group consciousness that we bring in around us. Um, we carry it around in our soul. And then what we create like during our lives after we're born or, you know, from inception on. The big thing is in the world, according to Brenda, Mm -hmm. that it's all about past lives and then it's like the family that we attract the you know so it's like we may have uh from a past life you may have been a very religious person or a healer in a past life mm -hmm. and a very common belief is i have to be poor to be closer to god uh -huh. Right. So they would give away, you know, we know this, right? We, you know, give all their worldly belongings away, right? So that they could live a very simple life in order to be able to get to heaven, right? To, in order to be able to. So I always say we have this belief that we've typically either inherited or that we brought in for a past life that we've created hell on earth so that we can eventually go to heaven. So it's a lot of struggle. People have to struggle so that they have a closer relationship with God so it builds their faith. We have to be poor so we can, you know, and of course struggle with money so that we can be closer to God. Those are past life beliefs. And Maybe the last um, century, isn't it? <laughs> and I and these are very common beliefs. Like it's not like, and this is the thing. 
I will have a very mainstream person and I'm still going to cover this belief with them. Yeah. And they may, you know, like I had this guy who was like a big commercial real estate developer here in, in San Antonio. And he would say to me, Brenna, I don't know what the hell you do, but mm -hmm. it works. Right. You know, like deals that. are going through, yeah. financing is getting approved. And the only thing I'm doing differently is working with you. He didn't know when he met me at a networking event that this was what I did, but it sounded good, you know, because I talked to him about um, preventing people from having, you know, from living the definition of insanity, Sure. which is repeating the same behavior and expecting a different outcome. Right. It's those things that we've inherited or that we've brought in from our past lives that keep us there. And then what ends up happening is that we have non-forgiveness for ourselves because we're not stupid, right? We're in, oh. in fact, it's harder for an intelligent person to go, you know, I can't, I just am doing this and I don't know why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. because of those types of beliefs that we have on a cellular level. That we're not even aware of. Right. That we're not aware of because it's not your job to be aware of them. You can, again, you're, you're just doing the best, again, use 11% of our brain. We're doing the best that we can to figure it out and, and that little small percentage that we use. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we think also a lot of times to trauma, and again, trauma is relative. So mm -hmm. it can be, you know, something violent or an act of war, or a car accident. It could be your mom being five minutes late picking you up from preschool one day. It does not matter. Mm -hmm. Trauma is, we hold that cellularly and I got to tell you, that's like a, you know, like, no, I don't want happiness. I don't want money. I don't want, I don't want anything. I don't deserve it. Right. So that really affects it. And even traumas that your family have mm -hmm. injured. So maybe I think, you know, I know we're talking about money, but I think it's easier for people to wrap around like addiction runs typically in people's families or, right. um, a, a physical deal like diabetes. Right. So you'll typically hear people say, oh, well, diabetes runs in my family or, you know, addiction runs in my family. No, it's the beliefs and traumas and non-forgiveness that run in your family. They do. The fear it's they not do. that. I was reading an experiment what they did with, I think it was mice or something. And it was like, it was seven generations and, right. and they tracked it because it was like, whatever it was, it, I can't remember what animal it was, but it was like, it, it had a fear of something. It was a, a smell of something it associated with and it was like seven generations before that was bred out of the line and and that's I think it was a scent that they gave um to a rat and then I, I mean I, I'm not condoning this kind of experiment but it was like right. they they gave the rats a, a scent of lavender or something and then chopped it um and, but it was seven generations before the the offspring stopped reacting to that scent of lavender with fear and so it's like, we don't know what, I mean, you know, right. I don't even know who my ancestors were seven generations back and what they might've been exposed to. That and for a lot of us, you know, like, again, we're, we're all like on ancestry.com and, you know, the, the, you know, looking into our, our genetics, but it, that tells you a lot as well. And there's a class in Theta Healing, like there are basic classes, prerequisite classes, and then there are upper level classes. One of my favorite is called World Relations mm -hmm. because it deals with all the cultures and religions. And literally when I took that class, you know, like again, muscle testing, yeah. the ones that I what, were, you know, had a prejudice against were cultures and religions that I had to Google. Like I had never even heard of them. Interesting. Like I had no idea, but yeah. again, that's going to affect who we are. Right. Um, and culturally, religiously, mm -hmm. there are some, depending on how you were raised, that's going to come into and how you deal with money. We either do exactly what our parents did, or we do the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. And it just really, you know, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if you do the exact opposite, you're still affected by how it was. Right. So is this something that you could maybe do a little healing for the audience here right now? Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Hey. So what I, uh, there are two things that I really love about Theta Healing. One, it's very complimentary. So it works with any other modalities out there, but it's also very complimentary in whatever you do for a living. Like I always tell people, because again, I always look at it, like, tell me what you do for a living and I'll tell you how to utilize it and what you do. 
-hmm. even if it's just a job, right? I mean, and not just a job, but if it's your, if you have a, if you, if you're not an entrepreneur, I can tell you that. But the big thing is, is also, this is the thing, one of the biggest, um, I think motivators for people to change is because they don't want seven generations from now, somebody dealing with what they were dealing with, right? right? Or even one generation from now, because if you do it, you're, it, it changes for your children as well. It will, especially if they're still at home, they're going to be affected by that. It, so it, you're not only doing work for yourself, you're doing work for your family. Right. And down the line. And also I believe immediately because each of us is vibrating at a certain level and we affect everything around us. So even if you're sitting in a room by yourself, you're still vibrating and that vibration is heading out there. Right. Absolutely. So we start to heal ourselves. And we know right now, let's face it, it, it was funny because um, I follow one gal who I've been following for like 20, 25 years. Um, her name is Patricia Cota Robles. And she's way out there. Again, if that's somebody that you, you want to talk to, like who's way out there and talks about way out there stuff, it's Patricia. And she does it in like to look at her. She looks like, I don't want to say she looks like your grandma, but you can tell she like gets her hair done like on a weekly basis type thing, you know, goes to the beauty salon, gets it done type deal. And she's very conservative looking, but she says these really profound things. And I, I mean, I've been following her since like getting a snail mail newsletter from her in the mail, you know, like before any of this, like we could have easy access like YouTube to do this. And, you know, she said she was actually, I just watched a, a vlog, right? So she's vlogging now um, on her saying that, um, you know, everybody keeps saying something really big is happening. Yeah. And it is yeah. um, on so many levels. So we can look at COVID as being the absolute worst thing but I feel like what's happened for a lot of people in the quarantine is they're having to look at themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And really, what do, we, what do we want to be different? People have had to really slow down. I know I'm thinking for like Ona and myself, that hasn't really happened. I know like the floodgates open for me and I've been crazy busy. You know, uh, I was actually gonna take a step back, do some rebranding, do oh, some things gosh. differently, hire a team, all of this. And I've been having to do it like as I'm like, <laughs> you know, getting other things done. And that, again, I, I'm not complaining because right. I feel very blessed. Well, it's because what I, and what I'm seeing here is that I, I'm seeing this true for a lot of healers right now, because, you know, those who are kind of internally ready, because this is, I mean, this is the time when the floodgates are opening for a lot of, you know, Absolutely. in a lot of ways, right? And, yeah, and I, was a, I was, a yeah, I was attending a, yeah. I was attending a virtual um, networking event. Yeah that was um, with holistic people. Yeah. And this was, why did this started? And all of them were complaining and they were very negative. And I just, you know, I get my mouth shut and then it, you know, like we all got to like speak and I said, I'm gonna tell you right now, like money is there. Like quarantine, the quarantine did not stop money from coming. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some people who are losing their jobs and believe me, I pray for the people who have and I was glad that there was a stimulus check. I, you know, this was before we knew something like that would happen. I was glad that there was able to be and that there were, you know, the government was able to give people more money up until like June or something like that. And, you know, it, it's, it was that, those types of things that I was, and I said to them, you know, if you're, if the glass is half empty, it is. And if it's half full, it is. And people right now, I just told them, you gotta, you gotta get over yourself because people need you right now. And you just need to figure out how you can meet them where they need you. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody's having to do. But especially for people, and people are being more open, right? Like, yeah. help me, in what way can you help me? Will this make a difference? Yeah. Or so and so, you know, all people who come like I was like, so and so told me about you, you know, two years ago. But all of a sudden, they have the time mm -hmm. and they have the inclination because they're being because right now we're getting a huge tap on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Like, do something, yep. change, yeah. be ready. Yeah. We're seeing our monetary system change. Like here in the U.S., I, you know, I'll just speak for the U.S. You know, we went to a gold-based system again. We haven't been in a gold-based system in decades. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of things that are changing that I just kind of go, well, isn't that interesting? That interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, and it's, again, these are really heady things and they're very, you know, like 
grounding and very, you know, low vibration, it feels like, but they correlate with vibrationally what we're doing and where we want to be. And I say like right now, like I can help people being, stop being so empathetic. Now that doesn't mean that you're cold, heartless and, and, uh, you know, uh, not compassionate, right? Right. What it means is, is that you're not as affected by the, you know, group consciousness energy of fear that's the out there a lot around rights that you're able to have some command over your empathy, right? Right. Would that be something that you can do real quick right now? Sure, we can do that because we can also, you know, the thing is, is that we want to be able to maintain our vibration. Right. And again, things will happen, but with Theta Healing, what it does is it allows us to bounce back quicker. Right. Or the bounce back, even feel like it didn't even happen. Yeah. So, you know, we can do that. Right. And, um, you know, and when so you we say less of able to... it doesn't mean that you're, you're reducing your ability to tune in. It's just that you can choose when you want to tune. tune well, you can increase so. your tune in. Right. It's about right. us. Like we, yeah. first and foremost, it's about us. Yeah. As selfish as that may sound or however it is. And if you're, empathetic, you know, because people always say this all the time. And I'm like, well, you know, you, you have, you have control over that. I mean, like, it's not like I'm at the mercy of my empathy. That's the deal. We don't want you to be at the mercy of it. Mm -hmm. What allows me to be do as well as I do and work as well as I do with my clients is I'm very empathetic. Mm -hmm. But I always say I'm an, an empath with boundaries, right? Exactly. It's the boundaries. So Yes, we love, 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 love. If you oh, it's like, come on, get to some work. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so I always make sure that, and I, and that was the, that was, I know we got off on a tangent. We want, you need to say yes out loud for any work. Like I'm going to say, we're going to change this. Would you like to change this? You need to say yes out loud. Now you don't have to scream it from the top of the mountaintops. You just need to say it though. It can't just be a nod. It needs to be a, you need to say it. And the reason is, is because one, your brain needs to hear, yes, you want it. Two, your divine power needs to hear, yes, you want it. And the universe needs to hear you say yes. So that's the big disclaimer there that you need to do it. So I always make sure whenever I work with a new client or student that they have three basic beliefs in place. I want an instant healing. I deserve an instant healing and an instant healing is possible mm -hmm. because what I do works very quickly. If you do not believe that you want deserve or that it's possible to have an instant healing, then guess what? It's going to make it really hard for my work to be very, be everything that it can for you. But also too, if you can think about it, our body is set up to heal itself. Yes. So you just want these beliefs so that you can be able to, you know, if we want to look at it from another perspective, we can do instant healing. Yeah. Our body is designed that way. We've seen it happen over and over. And then we get these stories or we get these things that, so we want to be able to have a massage, a chiropractic adjustment and for it to, to stick, mm -hmm. you know, and allow our bodies to do what it needs to do instead of it going back. Right. So we want to head in the direction of healing. So if you would like those, I want an instant healing. I deserve an instant healing and an instant healing is possible. We're going to let Ona cue us, right? Just mm -hmm. say yes out loud. Yes. <laughs> I just say, say yes, 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 right? <laughs> okay, everybody all together. One, two, three, yes. <laughs> and I always forget to say this. Mm -hmm. And I need to change that, right? I need to remember to say this. So I'm not, what I want, not what I don't want. I need to remember to say this. If you're watching the replay, guess what? All you have to do is say yes out loud and you'll get the work. So as much as I would love people to be watching us live and for us to have this huge audience and watching us live, whoever catches this replay, you get the work when you say yes out loud. Yes. <laughs> so we want to change. So we're looking at many. Mm -hmm. And again, this is like a pebble going into a pond and it just reverberates out. So we may look at it from one perspective, but I'm going to tell you it's going to change on a lot of different yes. ways. So one, it's going to change those four levels of what we've inherited, what we've brought in from past lives, what we have in our soul, what we've had created in this life. 
but also we're going to go to the original event that caused it to happen. That's how I roll as a theta healer, because I know that there's a trauma, there's trauma, we're, we're traumatized folk here, right? We're traumatized human beings and whatever was happened that we inherited past life and this life that caused that to happen for it to be true for us, that's where we're going as well, which is what makes it permanent and quick. Not every theta healer does that. This is how I do it because I want it to be the most effective. So we're going to look at here are a couple of um, beliefs. So normally if it was one-on-one -on -one or we were in a group, I would have you muscle test. We would do the before and after, but we're just doing like a, a impromptu group session where you can, you're free to muscle test the before and then stop the recording and, and test it. Or you can just say yes mm -hmm. and have it and great. So we want to one, forgive ourselves for what we've done around money, how we've handled it, how we've um, felt about it. A lot of people look at money and they feel negatively. We want to be, again, in that spiritual flow of honoring it. It's just energy. So we also want to forgive ourselves for dishonoring our energy. Mm -hmm. And we want to forgive ourselves for separating ourselves from what happens here on the physical realm. And we wanna forgive ourselves for being in that illusion mm -hmm. that we are a victim of what happens. So if you would like those, just say yes out loud. I'll say yes to all of them. We also want to change what prevents us from being in that flow of money, of prosperity, of abundance, right? Something happened. We want to change that we have to be poor to be closer to God, that we have to um, earn money at the expense of ourselves, that we have to... Um, Work harder, not smarter, because that's going to affect your money flow. Let's go ahead and do those. And I think there's probably maybe one or two more after that. And, and are, no, no, normally you would muscle test those beliefs, right, first. And can you, do you, can you give the audience a, a quick way that they can self-muscle test? So you want to put your fingers together and you can just run your finger through it. So like I want to hold it tight enough to where I can't go through it. Mm -hmm. You wanna close your eyes, make the statement and look up. So, um, so you wanna say, you know, um, say yes, say no. And you need to push your finger far enough. You wanna make sure like that you're like going like this, right? So if it doesn't open, it won't. And if it will, it will. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So like we're pushing it. So like I'm saying yes and I can't, you know, okay. and I'm saying no and I'm pushing it and it goes through. All right. So if I test it, I can say my name is Ona. Yes. Wait, uh, my name is Jake. Okay. Perfect. And we always want to do like a few little like things like name or weather. It's sunny outside. It's, you know, overcast outside to, because people have issues with yes and no as well. So we just want to make sure that we have a few like of these that are like no attachment to it. I'm, you know, I'm a female, I'm a male, you know, that that's something that you relate to, right? So, you, you know, those are types of things that you could do. So great example. And, or you can stand, right? A lot of people do the standing and standing is just getting, you know, standing up straight. Mm -hmm. Again, you want to clear your mind. What ends up happening is you want to muscle test immediately after making the statement. Because again, what our brain does is it starts going, when has this happened in my life? I wonder if this is true for me. I wonder, you know, like a million things start happening, right? So you muscle test as quick as you can. Because the deal is with theta healing, it doesn't matter what the answer is. If it's something that you don't want, guess what? We can change it immediately. That's so it's so painful for, for people. And a lot of times when people don't go deep within, you know, to find out things, it's because 
it's painful and then there's no way to change it or it's a long arduous road to change it right. and that's not the case here right okay so we did mention some right that we need to just have you say did we say yes to those owner I mean, you got to keep me on track. yeah we were talking about muscle testing so which what can you repeat those again those were um I'm trying to remember what they were uh, right the idea that you have to work hard to make money um so, so uh you know and again you can also even say i'm obligated because mm -hmm. an obligation means that there's no choice right right when we take an obligation oath and usually that's like a past life thing um it means like no choice so i'm obligated to work you know harder not smarter i'm obligated you know to uh have no you know to be poor to be closer to god right i'm obligated to make money at the expense of myself right because again, um, whether or not it's an obligation, it'll still test for the obligation because you have that belief. But if you say just the belief without the obligation, mm -hmm. it won't change the obligation. Mm, got it, okay. Okay, right. does that mean, I'm just, yeah, okay. Yep. So can we change those? Yes. And then let's see. Is there anything I else? Feel that. <laughs> um, it was funny. I was I do a weekly co live, and my guest that I had yesterday, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that this is like, but I do like what's called the Theta Healing Power Hour. So mm -hmm. you know, I I interview people like mainstream, and then we do some Theta Healing work around like the challenges that their clients or that would have. And so it was so funny because this is like a really like chatty, talkative woman, and she would just be like, I would do it, and and I'd be like, um, and if you'd like those, just say yes, and she'd be like, like after the second one, like she was just like. And I'd be like, okay, you got to cue him though. And she'd be like, I'm fascinated with what's going on here. Cause I'm guessing she could feel it on some level and was going, how is that possible? You know? Yeah. And, and so we were like laughing and I was like, okay, you got to cue him, you know? So let's, um, let's, let's change what obligates our brains to be in a poverty loop, okay? And because again, we have to think differently, not that that's where it comes from. Again, when we change on a cellular level, it does that. But if we have a loop in there, yeah. it's gonna be a little bit harder for it to, to, to you know, be yes. our brain to be there. Um, and not that that's the captain of the ship, but it's pretty close. It's the first mate, right? So, um, Mm, okay. And then let's change uh, money is the root of all evil. Okay. So if you would like those, just say yes out loud. Yes. Okay. So those are good places to start. Those are very good places to start. Thank you so, so much. And I, I'm just gonna encourage everybody who has watched this. If you didn't quite get like the muscle testing and the whole thing, just watch it again and, and just watch this part. Right. Here. Um, I'll put timestamps below so you can see where to, you know, where you can start the healing portion and um, just start watching for changes in your life, right, um, as, as the weeks, days, weeks and months go on. 
um, because these beliefs, (laughs) you know, if they're ingrained, it, 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 it creates subtle changes in behavior that will make big changes in your life. Well, and this is the thing that I always tell people, because it, you get a change on a cellular level, it's as if it's always been. Mm-hmm. So we don't notice it. Right. We get to enjoy it. Yes. That's the cool thing. And then somebody will say something to you like, did you change your skincare? Because you're looking so much younger or, oh my gosh, like you are like, that would have upset you before in the past. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, that would have upset me. But, you know, all of a sudden we're like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Are they be, you know, because I, I will say this, for years I've gone like to networking meetings and I will have a woman who will want to meet with me, want to chat with me. And inevitably she wants to chat with me because she wants her husband to come have a session with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Never about them. It's always about their husband. And I always say, you know, the world is our mirror. If you want it, to, if you want your husband to be different, you need to be different. So why don't you come have a session with me? Mm -hmm. And inevitably they will. And pretty soon their husband comes as well because their husband's like, I don't know what this gal did, (laughs) but like my wife, she's different and it's easier now. So yeah, I want some of that too. It happens all the time. So you may not be aware of it. And you know, another thing that I want to say, Ona, is that it's such an easy technique to learn. And I really encourage people for the first time, in the 20 years that Theta Healing has been around, we're allowed to teach virtually. And that's like, I've never, ever, ever, ever been able to teach Theta Healing virtually. And so we can right now because of the pandemic. That's great. And, so, you know, so I have a class like in, at the begin, like in about a month, at the beginning of November, I'd have to like look, yeah. I just changed dates. But I have the class... Um, I'll post a link to that below. I'll post a link to your to your website. And um, where where can people find you then if they want to? You know what? I would say just, I have um, a scheduling link uh, that will allow people to chat with me. So if you want to talk about taking the class or Theta Healing or what is Ona like, I'm happy to answer any of those questions. Um, and it's chatwithbrendab.com. Okay. Um, because I feel like that for most people, like if you get that intuitive hit, like I want to, yeah. you know, take it then, you know, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Brenda B. Bailey. Uh, you know, right now we're still working on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Just message me sure. and we'll get you the link and everything else. All of that's getting set up because I've changed. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so happy to, or I can always give it to Ona and she can add it here later. Sure. But, um, you know, but I, again, if you want to have a session with me, I'd love to have a session with you. I would more want, because Honestly, the certification classes for Theta Healing, they're not set by me. They're set by the Institute. It's one of the least expensive Mm -hmm. things that you'll get certified in. It's really, really inexpensive. And it's three days. And, you know, there are other prerequisite courses. And then you get to take really cool ones like Manifesting in Abundance and World Relations and Intuitive Anatomy. But the prerequisites have to be done. And the advanced class actually just changes a bunch of stuff for you like yep. tons of beliefs and traumas. Um, so it's less work. Cause again, the clearer the healer, the clearer the healing. Exactly. Right. So you want to be more profound in any work that you do as a healer, yep. learn theta healing. You don't have to become, you know, you don't have to be a theta healer, oh, right. but it's going to help you in whatever you do. Yeah. I know. I, I did healing on myself for years before I even thought about you know, doing it for anybody else. And so whether or not you ever want to, you know, put out your shingle, shingle as a healer, um, this kind of work is, is definitely, definitely worthwhile. So Brenda, thank you so, so very much for being on here today for your beautiful healing work. work. And um, it's, it's been a pleasure and I really, really look forward to um, you know, just keeping in touch. Please, yeah, as I say, please contact me. Um, I know that Ona's also going to put a link for a one minute meditation because it doesn't take long. That'll put you into a theta brainwave and allow you, again, it has to do with intention. You want to draw money to you, let that be your intention. You want it to be like a relationship or health or spirituality, whatever you want that to be, you can just make that your intention and still use the meditation. Um, And I always tell people it's one minute, do it in the AM and PM and do it for 30 days. It's going to help support the work that you've had here. Awesome. Thank you so much.
Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, thank everybody. Thank you, Ona. For joining us. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I want to thank everybody who's watching. Uh, love you dearly. And uh, um, thanks so much for joining us. We'll catch you again soon.